Well, I've always had dogs. My last retriever was just one of these once in a lifetime brilliant dogs. I thought, I can't get another retriever, so I'll go for a crossbreed. So I got a Labradoodle, and then he lived till he was about 11, and I just thought, I can't go through the heartbreak of losing another dog. So we've been very lucky with our cats that generally they are very healthy, they're very active, but when we first got them, both had big umbilical hernias, and we knew that we had to repair the defects that they had just so that they didn't cause a problem in later life. She was found in a park. She was in a really bad way. Her name is Rue, Rue Bear. You could see her, her spine and her ribs, um, and she was just sort of hobbling. My mum started crying when she saw her, and that was it really. We just decided we'd take her home. So I've owned Marco since he was a four-year-old. Right back when he was a young horse, he got kicked in the field, um, and on x-rays he had a tiny little chip fracture, um, and meant that he had to have a really prolonged period of rest and pain relief to get him healing and back to where he wanted to be. Spice is almost 10. She's a retriever cross, very loving. Spice was recently diagnosed with a heart condition, and so she's not currently in heart failure, but that is a risk in the future. So she's on daily medication. So this is Menzies. He is an eight-year-old male neuter chihuahua. He likes to bark at postmen, delivery men, bin men. I think that I do tend to worry about potential things that could go wrong with him, maybe because he, he isn't, you know, always in the, the best health and it was suggested that he could have a type of epilepsy. Edward was about four years old. For three days he was missing and then I just heard the cat flap go and turned around and he was just there and his leg was just behind him, covered in blood. Just so relieved to have him back because I think the worst thing is, is not knowing where they are. Even if he was, you know, he had died, then it was, sorry, um, it was just not, not knowing where he was. So um, just having him back, even if I was going to take him into the vets to be put to sleep, then that in itself was just, I just had him back and knew where he was and knew he wasn't suffering anywhere. My name's Scow and I am a registered veterinary nurse. My name is Anne and I am a veterinary surgeon. My name's Lorna and I'm a vet. I'm Thruan and I'm a vet and also a clinical director. My name's Rena, I'm a veterinary surgeon. My name's Artie and I'm the senior vet at our practice. My name's Nikki, I'm a registered veterinary nurse and veterinary physiotherapist. I'm Jess and I'm an equine vet. We all want to provide a really high standard of care. We all want to work to best possible standard, so the RCVS accreditation just brings it all together. We invite an assessor into our practice to assess what we're doing. I would hope that the accreditation emphasises to the general public that we do work to the highest possible standards. Underpinning all of that with just, just love and devotion for the animals very much the same as when I brought Edward in, that I handed him over to people I knew and that I trusted and I knew that they would do the very best for him and it's important for us to you know, convey the same message to our clients. So when they do leave their animals with us, they know we're going to look after them.